what is the relationship between inflation and interest rates, right? And, um, and again, I like to um, apologize. I don't mean to be uh, condescending in any way. I know many people know this, uh, but really another way to think about inflation is erosion of the value of your money. So if I go to the grocery store and purchase $100 worth of groceries and give them a $100 bill, and there is 7% inflation in the economy, and I go back next time a year from now, and give them that same $100 bill, I'm only able to get about $93 worth of groceries. I'm buying less groceries with that same bill. In other words, the value of my currency has declined. If you want to borrow $100 from me, let's say you're a friend and you just need to borrow you know, $100 from me and I don't want to charge you anything extra. I just want to get the value of my money back in a year from now. If inflation is 2%, I can charge you 2% interest. And a year from now, you come and give me 102. That $102 has the same purchasing power as $100 at the beginning. So I'm no worse off. You got to use the money. We're all good. Of course, you know, the financial institutions do want to make some money off of you, but let's set that aside. If inflation rate is 7% and I give you an interest rate of 2%, when you come back a year from now and give me $102, I have lost 5% of the purchasing power of that money that I lent to you. In other words, I'm worse off. In order for me not to be worse off, I have to charge you 7% interest. So when inflation goes up, interest rates go up in response, whether or not the central bank does anything. And of course, we know that central banks like to keep inflation in a bandwidth of one to 3%, 2% being that sweet point in the middle, but one to 3% because it fluctuates over time. Uh, that's when the policy for most Western countries, certainly Canada, US, uh, for a number of years, trying to keep inflation within that, range. And there's some there's a case to be made that it is not a bad policy. Preserving the value um, of our money is one of the key functions of the central bank, and it benefits everybody. So if you're a pensioner and you're on fixed income, if there's too much inflation, the value of your money goes away. So actors who are not very powerful are the ones who lose the most when there's too much inflation. People are not able to fight for higher wages who are on fixed income and so on and so forth. And certainly it affects people who have savings. If you're saving for retirement, the value of that money keeps going lower and lower. So there is a case to be made for the function of central banks in maintaining the value of our currency. And that's one of the things that banks try to do. When inflation goes up, they increase the overnight rate, which is the rate that banks charge each other that in turn will affect all kinds of interest rates in the market. As those interest rates go up, the idea is aggregate demand, which is the total demand, not only demand by consumers like us, but also by businesses and so on and so forth, will decline and that will bring down the inflationary pressures. Here's where we have a problem. If indeed it is the case, as I've suggested, that most of the inflationary pressures are from the supply side. The studies that I've looked at, and I've looked at a number of them, suggest that at most, somewhere between half a percent to 2% may be related to the demand side. In other words, the bulk of it is a supply side issue. Bulk of it is global in nature. In other words, it's outside of our control. Does increasing the overnight rate and therefore all the interest rates in the market, does it actually help or hurt our economy? I would suggest that in some ways it is still from a banker's perspective when the central bankers are looking at this, you could still lower aggregate demand, which will bring down some of the pressures and, um, because it's an interaction of um, aggregate supply and aggregate demand that will set the price level. In other words, the inflationary tendencies there. So that will help a little bit for sure. But most of the decline in inflation rate that we've seen over the past few months has to do with energy prices going down. Um, the other dynamic that is at play that seldom is talked about in the media is the fact that if our interest rates, if our overnight rates, those kinds of stuff 
um, is too far out of whack with some other economies. For us in particular, that's a US economy. It's an economy that we have the most amount of trade with, almost 80% of our trade is with them. Um, it, the US dollar is the currency of international exchange. So it's really important for us to uh, not to fall behind on that one. If, we, if our interest rate is much lower than theirs, it will put downward pressure on the value of, currency, of our currency. The value of Canadian dollar will decline. And of course, what that means is that a lot of the stuff that we purchase, not just from US, but from other countries where it's priced in the US dollar will be a lot more expensive to us. So again, there's another case to be made for um, maintaining the value of our currency. Subscribe now.